Hello everyone, my name is Field Training Officer McDaniel. This is Firefighter Harney. We're gonna be going over our bunker gear that we wear to protect ourselves during uh, fires, multiple different types of fires that we use. Um, while I'm explaining it, he's gonna begin to get dressed and I'll explain the components of the gear as we go along. So Firefighter Harney is now putting on his Nomex hood. This is used to protect our ears, back of our head, and our shoulders from moisture and other thermal uh, heated conditions. Um, this will interlock later on with our jacket as we get into it. He is now putting on his bunker pants. As you may have noticed, they were intertwined with his uh, boots. It allows him to quickly get into them and put on his pants without having to reattach them every time. Um, there's multiple components to this. There's uh, multiple parts to the uh, layers of this. We'll go in detail on this side for it. Um, he has pockets for extra gear that he might carry due, due to his preference. Um, there are connection belts that allow us to keep our waist tight so we are not too loose or too tight. Um, he holds the suspenders to keep his waist up the whole time, uh, as well as his gloves that he'll be putting on last. Um, he has his radio intact to make sure he keeps in contact with everyone while we were in fire operations. All right, well, the next component he's going to be putting on is his jacket. Um, attached to his jacket, you might see some of us wear helmet lights or um, auxiliary lights that we have attached here to help us in those dark, smoky conditions. There are multiple layers. Right before you zip this up, I just want to show them the multiple layers. So we have an internal layer which keeps us uh, from thermal protection. There's a secondary layer which is more of a moisture barrier to keep from steam and other components getting through. And then there's an outer layer that's going to be for any sharp objects, any bloodborne pathogens, or any other chemicals getting onto our direct skin contact. And these three layers, if there's air in there, will do a very well job at keeping us protected from the direct heat of the flames in the fire. As he goes to zip this up, it is a big part of our gear to make sure that we properly zip up and attach everything. Um, the initial part is the zipper. The secondary part is going to be his Velcro. There's multiple sections of Velcro that we have on our gear. And if just one of them is improperly secured, then we will have an issue where heat and flames could get into our gear and begin to cause a malfunction or deteriorate the conditions inside the gear that we are trying to stay out of. Um, he has now rolled down his Nomex hood, which has now become um, intertwined with his jacket to keep him away from the flames. He's going to be putting on his SCBA mask, which allows him to attach to our air pack and give him fresh breathing air as he goes through. He just did a seal check, as some people might understand. It's to confirm that the seal around uh, his face is intact, like some people do when they are wearing a snorkeling mask. They want to make sure that there's no air or water getting in there. So he reconfirmed that all the, the connections around his neck are secured and there's no issues with any area for smoke or flames to get inside of or other toxic gases. And now he's be putting on his SCBA pack. And that is a self-contained breathing apparatus is what SCBA stands for. This is designed to give us fresh breathing air from this bottle and it puts it right into our mask to make sure that we are able to breathe in those toxic conditions. Uh, there's multiple belts on that as well that look like seat belts. One's here in the waist that we keep attached to our hips. The other ones are two straps like a backpack. You pull these down and they keep it tight. We keep it around our waist because it is a very heavy piece of equipment and we don't want to overbear our shoulders as we're trying to work inside of a uh, fire. All right, so this is going to be the last piece of his heavy equipment that he will be putting onto himself, part of his structural firefighting gear. And this is more designed for uh, keeping him from any heavy objects hitting his head or any punctures. It has, like a hard hat, a cradle that allows the helmet to hover over your head. So if something large does hit, it keeps it slightly suspended and will reduce the impact on your actual head as you're going through. It has a chin strap to make sure if he looks up to the side or if he ends up laying on the ground, it does not fall off. Uh, it has a secondary section of ear protection. These are called ear flaps. They go down below the hood and below the collar to do another level of protection for his uh, back of his head, his ears, 
and he also, like some other firefighters, carries a helmet light that is designed to help us see um, during those smoky, dark conditions. And the very final piece that he is going to be putting on is his structural firefighting gloves. These actually, and just before you put it on on this side, he has a piece of this jacket that is designed to go around the thumb that keeps this wristlet pulled down so that there will never be an exposed piece of skin if the glove gets pulled down. So that stays down, that last glove will go on. And once that glove has gone on, it's now completely covered. And every piece of gear that we have is covered in multiple areas. If you can see here, we would have to remove two or three sections of gear each time to finally find a piece of skin. But that's just in case there's any issues and to maximally protect us throughout this process of fighting fires and wearing gear. Um, to go in a little more detail about the air pack he's gonna be wearing, this is a 4,500 PSI bottle. This can last us between 30 to 45 minutes of firefighting, um, actual working conditions. This is breathing air, not oxygen. Some people might confuse that. It is just regular breathing air. And this has a system that will also alert us with lights and a audible noise if a firefighter has gone missing or is in a separate location that we might not be able to find him. And then the last piece of safety equipment that is very important that has been integrated in the last 10 to 15 years is a, it's called a DRD, a drag rescue device. It is under this flap. I'm not gonna pull it because once you pull it, you have to completely reset it. But this is a strap that is interwoven through his gear that go around his shoulders and allow us an easy way if he does get uh, incapacitated in some source, we're able to grab him and drag him without his gear or arms filling up and making it much easier for us to rescue. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed the overview of our bunker gear. Uh, please stay safe out there and have a great day.